welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today's episode is Beyond Memory's Bounds. I want to talk about memory, how important it is, both spiritually and practically, and give you some different techniques you might be able to use to increase your memory. When it comes down to it, memory is everything. Neville Goddard tells us that when we move on to the next life, in many cases, we move on to another body, starting at the age of 20, and we don't know that we just died because we are inserted in another body and we have the memory of that previous body. So memory can be used to manipulate us and memories define what we think and feel about everything. Memory isn't just a mental scrapbook. It's the architect of our identity, the painter of our experiences, and the author of our personal stories. It's both our compass and our anchor, guiding us through the present and holding us to our past. But what is memory really? It's more than just a recollection of events. It's a dance of neurons, a symphony of the mind playing out in the concert hall of your consciousness. It's the magic that turns moments into meaning, the alchemy that transforms experiences into wisdom. Memory is the silent narrator of your life, whispering the stories of yesteryear into the ears of your present self. I remember standing under a starlit sky one summer night in Wyoming. There was no light pollution, and the universe was sprawling above me in its cosmic grandeur. The awe I felt in that moment is etched in my memory. I could smell the evergreen trees. It was a reminder of me, of life's infinite wonder, so beautiful. But here's the twist. Memory in its enigmatic grace isn't always accurate. It embellishes, it dims, it morphs. So years later now, I wonder, was the sky really that star-filled? Was the air filled with the scent of evergreen? Or is it just a poetic addition by my reminiscing mind. This is the beauty and the bane of memory. It shapes our reality. It colors our perceptions and even plays tricks on us. It's a dynamic, ever-changing force sculpting our past just as much as it influences our future. In this episode, we'll explore the spirituality of memory, its profound impact on our lives and the world at large. We'll unravel how our memories are far from perfect recordings, how they're malleable, and how this malleability isn't a flaw but a fascinating feature. It allows us to reshape and revise our memories, and in doing so, reshape our reality. Memory is a concept as elusive as it is familiar at its core. It's the process of encoding, storing, and retrieving information, a basic definition that we've all come to know. But to grasp the full essence of memory, we must look beyond this. Memory is a canvas where our experiences are painted, a fluid and ever-changing entity that shapes our perception of reality and ourselves. It's the thread that connects our past to our present, a bridge spanning the river of time. There is so much that we have forgotten, and there is so much we need to remember. Delving into history, we find that memory has always had a revered place in human civilization. Ancient Greeks personified memory as Memosine, a goddess who was considered the mother of the muses. In this culture, memory was seen not just as a mental faculty, but as a divine element, integral to creativity and the arts. Moving forward in time during the Middle Ages, scholars developed intricate techniques to enhance memory, like the method of loci, turning memory into an art form. Across different cultures, memory takes on varied hues. In oral traditions, memory is the vessel that carries stories and wisdom from one generation to another. For indigenous cultures around the world, memory is deeply intertwined with the land and their ancestral heritage. It is a living, breathing aspect of their identity, a communal treasure rather than a personal possession. Yet there's so much that we have forgotten and so much that we don't know because of our memory. In Eastern philosophies, memory is often seen in a different light, as something to be transcended. 
In the pursuit of enlightenment, memories are sometimes viewed as attachments that tether one to the illusion of self and the material world. The great diversity of perspective shows us that memory is not just a mental function, but a cultural, spiritual, and philosophical cornerstone. It's a mirror reflecting the diversity of human thought and the universal quest to understand our place in the tapestry of time. I invite you to view memory as more than cognitive ability. It's a key that unlocks the mysteries of the human experience, a window into understanding not just who we are, but how we fit into the broader narrative of human history and culture. Memory is not just about the past, it's a living dynamic force and can be used to literally create universes and realities. Memory and consciousness are intertwined. While memory is often viewed as a storehouse of past experiences, it is also deeply connected to our conscious awareness. Every moment of conscious experience is a potential memory, and every memory we recall swims back into the light of consciousness. This intricate relationship suggests that memory is not just a passive recorder of events, but an active participant in our conscious lives. In the realm of spiritual traditions, memory holds a special place. Take for instance meditation. Here memory is not just about recalling past events, but about being acutely aware of the present moment. In traditions such as Buddhism, memory is closely linked to mindfulness, the practice of being fully present and aware. This mindful attention to the present moment enriches our memory, allowing us to remember our experiences more vividly and with greater emotional depth. Exploring various spiritual paths, we find that memory is often seen as a bridge to the divine. In many religious practices, remembering is a form of worship or devotion. The act of remembering, whether it's the words of a sacred text, the teachings of a spiritual leader, or the details of a religious ritual is a way to connect with a higher power. In Hinduism, for example, the practice of smarana or remembrance is seen as a way to maintain a constant awareness of the divine presence. Memory also plays a crucial role in the formation of spiritual identity. In many cultures, collective memory, the shared remembrance of a community's history, traditions, and beliefs helps to define the spiritual identity of that community. These shared memories are more than just a historical record. They are the living heart of a community's spiritual life, shaping their beliefs and practices and sense of purpose. Mindfulness and memory are therefore deeply interconnected in the context of spirituality. Mindfulness enhances our ability to form rich, detailed memories, while memory helps us to bring the insights of our spiritual practices into our daily lives. This reciprocal relationship illuminates how memory can be a tool for spiritual growth, helping us to cultivate a deeper, more mindful awareness of ourselves and the world around us. In the many texts that we've read about fourth density from Quo and Ra, we are told of the veil of forgetting, and that this realm that we're in is marked by the fact that we forget our true origins and our true past. The concept of the veil of forgetting and its relationship to reincarnation introduces a fascinating and mystical dimension to our understanding of memory. This idea, found in various spiritual and metaphysical traditions, suggests that when a soul incarnates into a new life, it passes through a veil that obscures the memories of its past. This concept opens a realm of discussion on the nature of memory that transcends the physical brain and delves into the spiritual and metaphysical. The veil of forgetting is often perceived as a necessary mechanism for soul growth and learning. By temporarily erasing the memories of past lives, it allows the soul to experience life afresh, unencumbered by past biases or knowledge. This clean slate approach is thought to enable deeper learning experiences and opportunities for karmic evolution. If we accept the existence of the veil of forgetting, it challenges our traditional view of memory as being solely a function of the physical brain. It suggests this layer of spiritual or soul memory that exists independently of our current physical incarnation. Take a moment, for instance, and do something that I love to do, and that is try to conceive of remembering everything over a billion year time and how that would change your consciousness dramatically. Why is it that we come into this density and choose to forget? And why does it make everything so much more powerful? The human brain 
has limitations in processing and storing information. Remembering every detail of one's current life, let alone multiple past lives, would lead to cognitive overload. The constant influx of memories could make it challenging to focus on the present, as the mind would be perpetually crowded with an unending stream of past experiences. I am positive that we will start to have to deal with this as AI becomes more cognizant and aware and conscious, the realm of information overload will be important. With an exhaustive memory, every decision could become so much more complex, influenced by an overwhelming array of past experiences and their outcomes. This would lead to a sort of indecisiveness or constant second guessing of your choices considering the vast repository of past successes and failures. Carrying memories from all past lives would mean holding on to every emotional experience ever encountered. So all past dramas through every life would be integrated into your memory. The cumulative burden of past joys and sorrows and traumas and triumphs would be psychologically overwhelming, making it difficult to maintain emotional stability in the present moment. Imagine remembering every relationship from past lives, including family, friends, and significant others, navigating current relationships while being inundated with memories of past connections would lead to complex emotional entanglements and difficulties in forming new and healthy relationships. With the memories of all past lives, the concept of personal identity would become exceedingly complex. The lines between different incarnations would blur, potentially leading to a crisis of identity, as it would be challenging to discern the true essence of yourself across multiple lifetimes. You'd start to question your gender, your culture, your heritage, even your language. From a spiritual perspective, such extensive memory could lead to a heightened sense of karmic accountability. Individuals would find themselves constantly analyzing and judging their current actions based on the outcomes and actions in past lives which would be both enlightening and burdensome. This is an aspect of fourth density. We're going to reach a point of consciousness in fourth density where we have all our memories back. And these are some of the things that we will have to deal with. We are choosing to be in this density so we don't have to go through all the hoops that are required by having this massive memory. Even having extensive memory on some level could work against you. The practicalities of daily life would be significantly hampered by an overabundance of memories. Simple tasks could trigger a cascade of memories, making mundane activities like shopping and traveling or socializing exceptionally complex. And while having access to vast experiences would enhance learning and creativity, it would also stifle them. The reliance on past knowledge and methods might inhibit the development of new ideas and innovations as one can easily be trapped in the ways of the past. Yet we may learn that over time we're remembering these things and that the veil of forgetting is slowly going away and we have to encounter this implication. There are numerous accounts and anecdotes of individuals, especially children, recalling detailed and specific memories of past lives. These memories often include names, places, and events that can sometimes be historically verified. And while it's possible that these children are simply accessing the Akashic Record, these cases pose intriguing questions about the nature of memory and consciousness suggesting that memory could transcend physical lifetimes. In traditions that embrace reincarnation such as Hinduism and Buddhism, memory is not confined to one lifetime, but is part of a continuous thread of the soul's journey. This view expands the concept of memory to include not just what is experienced in one's current life, but also what the soul has learned over many incarnations. As some believe that while the specific memories of past lives are veiled, the lessons and experiences from these lives are embedded in the soul and possibly in our very neurology. These latent memories can influence our inclinations and fears, talents, and even life paths subtly guiding us deep down based on past experiences and learnings and the interplay between the veil of forgetting reincarnation and memory suggest a complex and multidimensional view of memory 
It's not just about retaining and recalling past events of the current life, but also about a deeper spiritual memory that influences and guides our evolution over multiple lifetimes. This perspective opens up new avenues for understanding human behavior, personality development, and spiritual growth, suggesting that our memories, both conscious and subconscious, are integral to the journey of the soul through the cycles of life and death. If you remember way back at the beginning of my channel, I read a lot of Dolores Cannon. A lot of that was her bringing up memories while in a deeply hypnotic state for people from past lives on different planets, in different times. And these recollections were very vivid. While they could be creative in some way, I think they're instructive in the way and the nature that the memory works. Let me ask you, if you lose all your memory, are you dead? If you woke up tomorrow and lost all your memory, what is the difference between that and death except that you're conscious in your body? Memory obviously plays a key role in our consciousness and the eternal nature of our soul. Are we truly living forever if we forget? And that is important for me to explore. I don't know and I can't answer that entirely. It feels like there's some aspect of this that I don't entirely understand. Memory wields a subtle yet profound influence in sculpting our perception and the reality we experience. It's not a mere repository of past events. The way we remember events can significantly color our perception of current experiences, our memories with their unique blend of facts and emotions act as filters through which we interpret the present and anticipate the future. When delving into the intersection of memory and reality construction, we find myriad examples of how memory alters personality and collective history. Personal memories, are, for instance, are not static. They're dynamic and malleable. They can change over time, influenced by subsequent experiences, current emotions, and new information. This fluidity can lead to the reshaping of personal narratives, where past events are reinterpreted in the light of present understanding. Such alterations can profoundly impact one's self-perception and worldview. On a broader scale, collective memory plays a pivotal role in shaping the history and identity of communities and nations. What if we could revise the collective memory? What if that is a technique that is used to manipulate us? It happens. We may have had giants in our past, but it appears that the history books have been changed completely for us to think there have never been giants. Maybe we've been visited by extraterrestrials and our history books have changed, so our collective memory has been changed about this. Collective memories can be selective, emphasizing certain events while omitting others, thereby molding the group's perception of its history and identity. For instance, when I read that Russians love Stalin, when Stalin killed like three million people, obviously they have no memory of this. Within their culture, they have no memory of the genocide that Stalin had conducted. So this aspect of memory has significant implications in understanding historical narratives, cultural heritage, and even political ideologies. People have often said that history is written by the winner. And so oftentimes what we think is our history of the past is simply not true and that our history is quite different and has been shaped by the victor the neuroscience behind memory and reality further illuminates how deeply intertwined these concepts are. The brain does not function as a passive recorder of events, and I've said that several times now. It actively reconstructs memories, often filling gaps with inferred or imagined information. This happens so often that I don't think we can truly trust our own memories in most cases within third density. This reconstruction process is influenced by various factors, including emotions and biases and the brain's inherent desire for coherence. Neuroscientific research has shown that the act of remembering itself can change the memory, a phenomenon known as reconsolidation. This means that each time we recall a memory, it is slightly altered before being saved again. Moreover, the brain's ability to imagine and predict future events relies heavily on its capacity to remember the past. This intersection of memory and imagination is crucial in how we construct our personal reality 
It enables us to simulate future scenarios based on past experiences influencing our decisions and actions. In exploring the power of memory in shaping reality, we find that memory is not just a reflection of our past, but a lens through which we view and create our present and future. It is a force that molds our perception, informs our decision, and frames our understanding of the world. Academic research has clearly shown that memory actively participates in the construction of reality. It does so by influencing how we interpret new information, make decisions, and form our beliefs and attitudes according to Loftus and Palmer, who demonstrated this in their seminal work on eyewitness testimony, showing how suggestive questioning could alter a participant's memories of an event, effectively reshaping their perceptions of reality. This malleability of memory has significant implications for your personal identity. Conway and Plydall Pierce in 2000 proposed the autobiographical memory theory suggesting that our life narratives are constructed from our memories and these narratives provide us with a sense of continuity and identity. Barr in 2007 established through a study that brain uses past memories to predict future events, creating a subjective reality based on these predictions. Furthermore, the phenomenon of false memories where individuals recall events that never occurred underscores the constructive nature of memory. Loftus in 97 demonstrated that it is possible to implant entirely fictitious memories, leading individuals to believe in alternate versions of personal history. Now this can both be good and bad, and we will talk about that when we come to revision. As Marcel Proust once said, remembrance of things past is not necessarily the remembrance of things as they were. Now the traditional view posits that memory is a function of the brain, the gooey stuff between our ears involving neural processes for encoding, storing, and retrieving information. However, I believe that memory is not confined to the physical brain, and more and more evidence seems to indicate this. It exists in a more expansive, non-physical realm, the mind. The brain and mind are different, and this viewpoint introduces the concept of a memory field, a theoretical construct suggesting that memories exist outside the physical boundaries of the brain. Drunvalo Melchizedek in his book, The Flower of Life, indicates that Russian astronauts discovered when they had went beyond a certain level of the atmosphere, they began to forget and that they had to wear certain magnets on their suit to retain their memory. I have not been able to confirm that information, but I have not forgotten it because I believe that there has to be truth in it. It makes more sense to me than it actually existing physically in the brain. We've discovered through research that memory is not located in a particular part of the brain, that people have had certain portions of their brain removed and they still remembered things from the past, so it's not entirely dependent on that. The concept of a memory field draws from various fields, including parapsychology, quantum physics, and consciousness studies. It resonates with Rupert Sheldrake's theory of morphic resonance. You can check out my episode on morphic resonance which proposes that there is a field within and around a living organism which can shape its development and behavior. And in this context, a memory field could be seen as a type of morphic field specific to memory. If memory exists in a field outside the brain, it would imply that our consciousness interacts with this field to recall past experiences. This perspective could explain a phenomenon such as collective memory, telepathy, or even cases of reincarnation memories which are challenging to account for within the traditional brain-centric model of memory. Some theories in quantum physics suggest the possibility of non-local interactions where particles can influence other states instantaneously over long distances. Extending this idea to memory and consciousness, it's conceivable that memories are stored in a non-local field that our minds can access. Perhaps it's an individual field or it's a single field like the Akashic field. But I know you, if you're like me, you want to know how to increase your memory. And I started to really play with my memory when I learned how to speed read. And I found I just wouldn't remember a lot of the material that I sped read. So I wanted to learn how to remember it. And so I started to delve into these different techniques for memory. Can't say I have the greatest memory and that's by choice because some things I simply choose not to remember. But in the quest to enhance memory, stepping beyond Conventional methods will open up a world of intriguing possibilities. Techniques like meditation, visualization, and sensory experiences, though unconventional, have shown remarkable potential in boosting memory capabilities. 
Meditation has emerged as a powerful tool for improving memory. Studies have shown that regular meditation can lead to increased gray matter in the brain, particularly in areas associated with memory and learning. The process of quieting the mind and focused attention inherent to meditation not only reduces stress but also enhances cognitive function, including memory retention and recall. Visualization techniques take a different approach. They involve actively creating mental images or scenarios to remember information. This method taps into the brain's natural propensity for visual processing by associating abstract information with vivid imaginative images. The recall process becomes more efficient and effective. Athletes and performers often use these techniques to memorize complex sequences of movements, suggesting their applicability across different memory requirements. Sensory techniques also play a pivotal role in memory enhancement. Multisensory learning, where multiple senses are engaged, can lead to more robust memory formation. For instance, associating a particular scent or sound with specific information can trigger stronger and more accessible memory recall. This approach is grounded in the idea that the more senses involved in the learning process, the more pathways are created in the brain for recall. My favorite is memory palace, a concept that was discussed by Sherlock Holmes, a concept dating back to ancient Greece, which offers another fascinating approach. This method involves visualizing a familiar space, such as a house or a path, and placing vivid, memorable images representing pieces of information in specific locations within that space. By mentally walking through the memory palace, one can recall information in a specific order. This technique leverages the brain's spatial memory capabilities and has been used by memory champions to achieve remarkable feats of recall. It's amazing what we remember and what we don't remember. Do you remember your first phone number? first address of your house. Why do you remember those things? Why do you remember things from earlier in your childhood that you don't remember now? Why is it harder to remember phone numbers? Another technique that works is the art of mnemonics, closely related to memory palaces. And this involves creating associations between information and easily remembered words, phrases, or images. This could range from acronyms to rhymes, where each element serves as a cue to trigger the memory of the associated information. Mnemonics transform difficult to remember information into formats more easily processed by the brain. Lastly, integrative body-mind techniques for memory enhancement acknowledge the interconnectedness of physical and mental health. Activities like yoga and tai chi, which combine physical movements with mental focus and breath control, have been shown to have a positive impact on memory. These practices not only improve physical health, but also enhance mental clarity and memory retention. Alongside these techniques I've mentioned, there are other techniques I found in researching this, starting with learning a language, engaging in complex learning activities like acquiring a new language, or learning to play a musical instrument, significantly boost cognitive function according to research, including memory. And these activities stimulate neuroplasticity, leading to improved memory overall, including in areas that are not related to learning the new language or music. Just like cross-training in sports, engaging in a variety of mental activities can enhance memory. This involves puzzles or strategy games or learning new skills. All of those things have been shown to increase your memory. Certainly, dietary changes may have an effect and eating brain-healthy foods could have a positive impact on your memory. Foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants, and vitamins are shown to enhance cognitive functions. Examples include fatty fish or blueberries, turmeric, broccoli, pumpkin seeds, dark chocolate. Adequate and quality sleep is also crucial to memory consolidation. Have you ever gone for a certain period where you didn't get your full eight hours of sleep? and then your memory starts to go. Sometimes by maintaining a proper quality sleep habit, your brain will process and consolidate new information in a way that allows for your memory to continue. Improving sleep quality and establishing a consistent sleep routine will significantly benefit your memory if you're struggling with it. Regular physical activity, especially cardio, 
increases blood flow to the brain and has been shown to improve memory and cognitive function. So activities like running, swimming, or cycling can be particularly beneficial. Research shows that creative activities like drawing, painting, or sculpting can stimulate the brain in unique ways which enhance memory. Creating stories or engaging in creative writing exercises can also be another way of boosting memory. Regular social interaction has been shown to have a positive impact on memory. And also, reducing your stress levels is also effective. High levels of stress can adversely affect memory. Biofeedback and neurofeedback machines are being developed to enhance and improve mental functions, including memory. Another is aromatherapy. Certain scents like rosemary, lavender, and peppermint are believed to have cognitive enhancing properties. Aromatherapy with these scents can aid improving focus and memory. Other mental strategies you can use for memory retention is chunking and organizing information. By breaking down complex information into smaller manageable chunks, you can make it easier to remember. I could give lots of examples and do a whole episode on this, and perhaps I will. Another thing I found effective for memory is teaching others. Explaining what you've learned to someone else is a powerful way to reinforce your own memory because teaching requires you to recall, organize, and clarify your knowledge, which enhances memory retention. There's mind mapping, and this technique involves creating a visual diagram of information. Mind maps help in organizing thoughts and ideas in a networked manner, which can be particularly useful for visual learners. I always do well with music. I can remember a song after a few listens. How can I remember a song when I struggle with something else? So music training can also help with your memory. Learning to play a musical instrument or just getting involved in music in general activates a certain part of your brain which cross trains itself and increases your mental capacity. Engaging in new hobbies can challenge the brain. Additionally, there are brain training apps that are becoming available now through your phone designed to improve cognitive functions, including memory through games and puzzles. It's hard to talk about herbal supplements because there's very little research that really can be quantifiable, but personally, I've used ginkgo, ginseng, bacopa, all to boost my own memory, and I believe that it's had an effect. I regularly take those herbs. It's important to consult a healthcare provider or read more about it Everybody gets different results by taking herbs like ginkgo or ginseng. I've also met a significant number of people that swear by using binaural beats or sound therapies as a way of enhancing cognitive function, including memory, especially when studying. Certain frequencies and sounds are very powerful, especially when putting themselves in a studying environment and they're able to grasp it and remember more quickly. Of course, the ultimate is repetition. That's what actors and speakers have been using forever. Just repeat it over and over and over again. Eventually, you'll remember it. But we don't always have the choice of repeating something over and over. So the question is, what about dementia? I remember visiting a close family friend who seemed fine and did not necessarily have dementia, but they had experienced major memory loss and did not remember most of their past. When I was discussing this with my sister, she said that this was a great thing, that this person had been stuck in the past and this letting go of the past was powerful spiritually for them. And so in some cases, not all, because there's science behind this, I believe that people choose to forget, that they are an active part of their own dementia. The idea here is that individuals choose conditions like dementia because they're simply unable to resolve the catalyst in their life. And instead of dealing with them, it's easier for them to simply forget. The notion of purposeful forgetting in the context of dementia is deeply metaphysical. It suggests that on some level, there's a choice to let go of certain memories or aspects of our identity. Who knows if this is true, but I'm proposing that it's a possibility. Sometimes forgetting is therapeutic. For individuals who have experienced traumatic or painful events, the process of forgetting can bring a sense of relief. As the details of these events fade, they may find a reduction in the emotional burden that they carry. As people 
age, forgetting can sometimes simplify the complexities of life. Without the extensive web of past memories, individuals may find themselves living more in the present, potentially leading to a more peaceful state of mind, especially if they have previously reconciled with significant life events. Often the process of forgetting is selective, preserving core memories that are fundamental to our identity and life story. The selective memory can highlight the most meaningful experiences and relationships, offering comfort and continuity of self as one nears the end of their life. There's a tendency in older adults to recall positive memories over the negative ones, a phenomenon known as the positivity effect. This may serve as a coping mechanism, helping to maintain emotional well-being and life satisfaction in later years. We are often told through many different channelers and new age thinkers that we go through a life review at the end of our life. Bashar talks about this. At the end of our life, we go through a life review, sort of from a neutral perspective, and we deal with particular events that we have not resolved or dealt with in our present conscious life. And we experience these events through others. I tried to address the nature of this in the recapitulation episodes, which is about going over these memories. And oftentimes in the process, you bring up things you didn't remember and you can process them. So you don't necessarily have to deal with this in multiple future lives or address the karma of it in multiple lives. My concern in many ways is that I've forgotten something that I have done. Perhaps I've done something when I was drunk at some point or that I've done and I've chosen to forget that is important for me to resolve karmically. And so sometimes I will pray, let me remember the things I need to so that I can address them properly now while conscious and alive. And ultimately, I believe and my desire is what I call for when I affirm my belief in immortality and a future is an immortal future of remembering so I can remember these moments with you and remember the moments from my past and the future because it's all precious and it's all wonderful for me and I'm willing to embrace the cognitive overload that might occur because I want to remember. My life has been wonderful and I want to remember the wonderful things. I want to remember the lessons that I've learned and the tough things that I've experienced. I don't want to forget and I want to have immortality that is also... Now, I can't talk about memory without delving into revision and rewriting memory. Ultimately, the imagination is more important. And according to Neville Goddard, we won't remember all of this anyway. It won't be important. So diving into the world of memory, we often find ourselves wishing we could change certain aspects of our past. What if I told you to some extent we can? Let's first talk about techniques to consciously alter memories. It sounds like something out of science fiction, yet it's not. Certain therapeutic techniques allow individuals to reframe or recontextualize their memories. One such technique is memory reconsolidation, where a memory is recalled and then modified with new, more positive or neutral information. I included this in the recapitulation meditation. It's like editing a movie scene in your mind, changing the script slightly each time you recall it. Another approach is through narrative therapy, where individuals are encouraged to rewrite their life stories, changing their personal narratives. This doesn't mean denying what happened, but rather changing the way we interpret it and give meaning to our past events. It's about shifting the narrative from a victim story to one of survival and resilience. And then there's a revision. It's a bit of a tightrope walk, because on one hand, altering memories can be incredibly beneficial, especially for those dealing with traumatic experiences. On the other hand, there's the concern of authenticity and ethical implications of changing our past, this is explored in The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, a great movie, where you can literally go to somewhere and have the memories removed from your brain. So you have a terrible relationship and you've broken up with somebody and they could go in and they would remove the memories. Is that good or is that bad? It's worth noting that every day we all revise our memories, often without realizing. Each time we recall a memory and share it, we're subtly reshaping it, influenced by our current emotions who we're telling it to, and our present self's perspective. The natural process of memory evolution is a testament 
to the fluidity of our memories and our ever-changing selves. In the philosophy of Neville Goddard, the world around us is a reflection of our inner state, our thoughts, beliefs, and imaginations. Thus, to revise a memory is not simply to change a past event in our minds, but to transform the energy and significance that event holds in our present and future. It's about reshaping our reality from within. Neville Goddard tells of a story of a woman who was blinded in a car accident. And so she would continuously remember the car accident. She was driving too fast. Somebody had stopped on the road and she hit the car. So she imagined slowing down and then going around the car. As she did this, she had been blinded and was not able to see in one of her eyes. Slowly, she started to be able to see in that eye. And when she went to the eye doctor, they said she had no problem. So revision is a real thing that can really change your life. There are numerous stories of it, and I have done it regularly, and it has helped me immensely. Revision in this context is an act of imaginative recreation. It involves entering a state akin to a waking dream, where the lines between subjective and objective blur. And in this state, you bring forth the memory you wish to revise. You observe it, not as a bystander, but as an active participant with the power to alter its course. Here the past event is not fixed or mutable, but malleable to the power of your focused imagination. As you vividly reimagine the event, you infuse it with new outcomes, new emotions, and new meanings. This isn't mere wishful thinking, but a deliberate act of mental transmutation. By changing the emotional and psychological impact of the memory, you're effectively altering its influence on your current self and the world you experience. This is the essence of his teaching on revision, that imagination shapes destiny. And by altering our inner narratives, we can reshape our lives. Oftentimes, we're limited about what we can imagine for our future because of what has happened in the past. I find this in money all the time. You have terrible experiences that created a lack mindset. And it's hard for you to imagine an abundance mindset based on your lack memories. So if you can revise those memories, creating an abundant past, you can create an abundant future based on your abundant past that you have revised. It's one of the most powerful and unique techniques that you can use in creating the reality that you wish to create. This is more than just a psychological technique. It's a spiritual practice embracing the divine power of your imagination to transform the past, heal the present, and create a future aligned with your highest aspirations. Your reality is not predetermined by past events. You may have just started living in your body today. Learn from your past, choose to treat it with respect, and revise those memories that are limiting your future. I want to remember everything, and I don't want to forget anything, and it's important to me. And I think about it often. That's why I did this episode. But if you're struggling with your memory, I want to give you a short little meditation right now to cement this and to enhance your memory so when you walk away from this you feel that your memory is being enhanced so take a moment to close your eyes and take a deep breath in and slowly exhale with each breath you take allow yourself to feel more relaxed more at ease as you continue to breathe deeply and comfortably, you might begin to notice how your body naturally becomes more relaxed with each breath. Almost as if with every exhale, you're releasing any tension you might have been holding on to. Now imagine yourself in a place where you feel completely at ease. This could be a place you've been to before or a place that exists only in the vast landscape of your imagination. Notice the details of this place, the colors, the sounds, the sensations. Feel the environment around you as if it's becoming more real with every breath you take. As you immerse yourself in this place, think about the incredible ability of your mind to recall and create. Consider how every memory you have is a testament to this ability. You have within you a reservoir of knowledge 
an experience, a well of memories from this life and past lives that you can draw from at any time. Now visualize a gentle glowing light beginning to form. This light represents your memory, your ability to recall and remember. See this light growing brighter and more vibrant. Feel it as an energy that's both within you and around you. Imagine now that you can interact with this light, that you can shape it and guide it. Think about a memory you'd like to recall, something pleasant and joyful. As you focus on this memory, notice how the light becomes even brighter, more vivid. It's as if this light is connecting you to that memory, making it clearer and more detailed. Notice how with this light, you can refine and enhance your memories. You might even find that you can recall details that you hadn't thought of in a long time. It's as though this light is illuminating parts of your memory, bringing them into sharper focus. Now let's take a moment to think about something you want to remember. It could be something you need to recall for later, a task, a name, a piece of information. Whatever it is, hold it in your mind now and watch as the light surrounds this thought. See it there, clear and bright, surrounded by this glowing energy. As you continue to breathe deeply, feel a sense of confidence in your memory's power and ability. Know that whenever you need to recall something, this light is there, ready to illuminate your thoughts and guide you to the information you need. You can simply close your eyes and imagine this glowing light to access this memory. I have done this and remembered things I never thought I would be able to remember. Now take a moment and bring up any memory in which you wish to revise. Pull up the memory of it and briefly review it neutrally, not getting into the feelings of it. Now, go into the memory and remember it differently, the way you wish that it had occurred. Revise the memory of it. Change the feeling of it. Make it vivid and real. Within this feeling and knowing that your memory has enhanced, say these affirmations with me. To cement your intention to increase your memory. Every day my memory is becoming stronger and more reliable, now until the end of time. I easily remember information when I need it. My mind is clear, focused, and sharp. I trust my ability to recall details with ease and accuracy. With each passing day, my capacity to remember improves. I have a powerful memory that serves me in all aspects of my life. Retaining and recalling information effortlessly is a natural skill for me. I am grateful for my brain's ability to store and retrieve memories efficiently. My mind is like a well-organized file cabinet where everything is stored neatly and accessed easily. I am amazed at how easily information comes to me when I need it. My memory is sharp and precise and I rely on it with confidence. I am capable of remembering more than I ever thought possible. My ability to refocus and memorize is increasing every day. I am confident in my memory 
and trust in its power to remember. Every time I learn something new, my memory becomes stronger. When you're ready, slowly start to bring your awareness back to the present moment. Take a deep breath in, feeling refreshed and confident. And as you exhale, gently open your eyes, carrying with you this sense of clarity and enhanced, revised memory. Remember, this could be practiced regularly to help you reinforce your belief in your memory's capability and to enhance your ability to recall, retain, and revise information to your benefit. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.